Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be going over and showing you how to install the e-trailer trailer hitch receiver here on our 2017 Kia Sorento. So this is what our trailer hitch looks like installed on the vehicle. Now everything is actually nice and tucked up to the bottom of the bumper there, so we're not going to reduce our ground clearance as much. In the e-trailer trailer hitch receivers, they actually have a nice matte black powder coated finish, which helps protect the hitch from rust and corrosion, being that it is on the underside of the vehicle. And that matte finish also does a better job of help hiding nicks and scratches. And in most cases, it blends in well with the underbody paneling on the vehicle a little bit better. So adding a trailer hitch to your Sorento here, it's gonna be an excellent option because it's gonna make your vehicle that much more versatile. Now we can obviously use the trailer hitch for towing, but if we wanted to free up some space inside the vehicle for our family on those long road trips, or if we just simply wanted to hit the trails, we could easily attach either a hitch mounted bike rack or hitch mounted cargo carrier slash box. So in regards to towing, our trailer hitch here is gonna provide us with a 5,000 pound gross trailer weight rating. That's the amount we can pull outward on our fully loaded trailer. It also has a 750 pound tongue weight rating. That's gonna be the downward force on the receiver too. Now keep in mind, these capacities are for the hitch only, which is tested separately of the vehicle. Therefore, we need to verify our vehicle's towing capacity and abide by the lower of the two rated components, whether that's the hitch or vehicle. So our trailer hitch here does have the standard two inch by two inch receiver tube opening, and that's gonna provide us with a much greater variety of those hitch mounted accessories to choose from, such as bike racks and cargo carriers. Make sure you check out our selection here at eTrailer. So on the side of the receiver tube, you're gonna see we have our 5 8 inch diameter hitch pin hole. That's gonna work great with our 5 8 inch diameter hitch pin and clip. Now keep in mind, the hitch pin and clip don't actually come with the trailer hitch. And the reason for that is most of your aftermarket accessories are actually gonna come with their own specific hitch pin and clip. And then weld them to the bottom of the receiver tube. We have our safety chain loops. Those are gonna work great with both the S-type as well as the larger clevis style. So now we got a couple measurements for you guys here. The first one is the distance from the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening. This one's right at 13 inches, and that's gonna be useful when you're selecting your ball mount. That way you can make sure you get the correct rise and drop to tow your trailer level. And then we have the distance from the center of the hitch pin hole to the outside edge of the bumper. And this one's gonna be right at four and a half inches, and that measurement there will be useful when you're looking at your filling accessories, such as bike racks and cargo carriers. That way you can make sure that while they're in the stowed position, they don't contact the vehicle. So in regards to installation, this one is definitely not too bad at all. There's gonna be no modifications to the vehicle, so no cutting, drilling, or welding. Everything's pretty much straightforward. We can go ahead and walk you through this entire process, step by step now. Now in regards to the tools needed, there is one you may not have, and that's gonna be a torque wrench. You can actually rent these for free in most cases at your local auto parts store. So the first step of our installation, we actually need to lower the spare tire. So in order to do that, we're gonna open up the hatch here, come inside, under the cargo flooring here, we're gonna have a nut that we need to loosen, which is attached to a winch mechanism that'll lower the spare tire. So if we look in there, we should be able to see that nut. And now we're just gonna use the tools provided in the vehicle here, and this little foam cutout to lower the spare tire just like so. So that piece goes over the nut, and then we use our crowbar here to loosen that. Now, we'll just continue loosening until the spare tire is free from the vehicle. Now we need to come over here to the driver's side we're gonna have an underbody panel here. We need to remove this. In order to do that, we're gonna have two push pin fasteners on the bottom there. Remove those. And then we have a couple nuts at the top here. You're just gonna take a 14 millimeter socket. These are plastic nuts, so you can unthread them by hand. And they won't actually remove completely from the panel. You're just gonna loosen them up and then we can pull straight down and out. So next, we're gonna be lowering exhaust here. So what we need to do is 
take some sort of safety strap or using a cam buckle strap. Um, if you're on the ground, you could use a couple set of jack stands or a couple blocks of wood. We're just gonna simply attach it to two fixed points on the frame and then pull that tight to provide some support for exhaust when we remove the hangers, which is what we'll be doing next. We're gonna grab a spray lubricant and we're gonna spray down each of our three hangers. We're gonna have one towards the center here attached to this cross member, one sort of tucked away back behind the exhaust, and then one at the front. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna spray down the rubber isolator where it meets the metal hanger nice and good, which is gonna aid with removal. I'm gonna make sure we get all three of these. And we'll show you how to remove them. We have a couple different options for removal. You can use either a specialized tool for this, an exhaust hanger removal tool, or you could just use a simple pry bar. So we'll show you both methods. Sometimes the exhaust hanger tool doesn't always work because you don't have enough space. And then sometimes it takes a combination of both. So there's one, now we have two more. Next, we're gonna have a rubber plug on the bottom of each frame rail here. We need to remove both of those. So pretty simple to remove that. So the next step is to raise our hitch into position. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our M10 fasteners here that come in your kit and you're gonna get your conical tooth washer ready. So we wanna make sure the teeth are facing up towards the hitch. So these are the bolts we're gonna be using to secure the hitch on the vehicle first. We're gonna have one for the driver's side, two for the passenger side, but I do recommend go ahead and testing all the weld nut locations in the vehicle's frame here. So you just wanna make sure that your bolt threads in freely. There's no resistance. As you can see, we're good there. So if our weld nuts are too dirty to thread our bolt in, we're just gonna take a spray lubricant, spray them down nice and good. Take our wire brush and just run that through the weld nut there. And after we spend a little bit cleaning that out, we'll try to thread in our bolt again. And then we'll just repeat the same process until it can thread in freely. Now, if your vehicle is old enough or you live in some of the northern climates with a lot of snow and salt on the road here, these can get pretty rusty. So in which case you would need to take a thread tap. Be careful to clean out the weld nuts. Um, I do recommend that you take your time on that one because you can cross thread the weld nuts and create some larger problems down the road. So worst case scenario, you can use a thread tap, but most of the applications, you should be able to clean them out here with a wire brush. So now with an extra set of hands, we can raise the hitch up and on the vehicle here. You're gonna start on the passenger side first, coming up and over the exhaust. And then as we said, we'll secure it with the M10 fasteners on the bottom of the frame. So on the driver's side earlier, we're actually using the weld nut closest to the bumper beam. The one we were showing you how to clean out was the other one, which doesn't get used on the driver's side. It does get used on the passenger side, however. So once we get the M10 fasteners in the bottom of the frame, over here on the driver's side, we're gonna take our half inch carriage bolts. And we're gonna insert those through the outside of the frame going in. We'll find our hole there and then just place the fastener like that. We're gonna have two of them on the driver's side. Now on the passenger side, it's gonna be pretty much the same thing, a little bit different here. We're actually gonna be using seven 16 inch carriage bolts. So they're, they're gonna be the same length, but a little bit smaller than this side. And we're actually gonna be going from the inside out over on the passenger side. But once we get the half inch ones in place here, we're gonna have our half inch flange nuts and they'll simply secure it to the inside of the frame. So this one at the rear here, or closest to the front of the vehicle, that one's gonna be able to go in pretty smoothly. The one closest to the bumper beam, you can see we have a bumper alignment pin here. This is made out of plastic, however, so we can just move it out of the way with our hand to freely thread on our nut. So next we can begin tightening and torquing our hardware starting with the M10 bolts on the bottom using a 17 millimeter socket. Now we're gonna switch over to a three quarter inch socket. We're gonna tighten and torque the two half inch carriage bolts.
And again, on the inside there, remember we had that bumper alignment pin. If you want, you can just sort of hold it back with your hand, or you could take a Dremel tool or a razor knife and just cut it off. It's totally up to you. And then for the 7 16 inch carriage bolts over on the passenger side, we're gonna use an 11 16 inch socket. Keep in mind, the torque values are gonna be different for all three of our different bolt sizes. Now, don't forget to raise your exhaust back up into position and reinstall the panel on the driver's side that we removed earlier. And that's gonna do it today for our look and installation of the e-trailer trailer hitch receiver here on our 2017 Kia Sorento.